Hello and thank you for joining me for this tutorial of the board game Welcome to Sisyphus Corp. If you're not a greedy competitive person trying to climb up the corporate ladder then you can pretend to be one in this game. Here's how that goes. You are going to keep playing until one person has been to these three corners with the bosses and has then walked back to this fourth corner. Then the game is over and that person is the winner. That's it. Visit the bosses and then go to this space. If you're the first to do that, you end the game and you're the winner. Next, how do you play the game? What do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you can use these black cubes on your own player board to do actions. And all the actions are there on your own player board. Just slide a cube to an action and then do it. Once you have no more cubes to assign or you don't want to do anything else, you end your turn by maybe taking some cards. You are allowed to do the same action more than once during your turn. And when you've ended your turn, the person to your left goes next. You just keep going round and round the table until it's over. So, let's have a look at the actions you can do. When it's your turn, you can choose to slide your cube to the top right for the move action. You can only move one space and you may only step onto one of these cards. You can't step on the space of the board that doesn't have one of these cards. Also, you can only move from one card to the next if it's connected by these little yellow notes on both ends. If two cards aren't connected by the yellow notes, then you can't move there. It doesn't matter if you were the one who placed the card there or not, everyone can use the cards that are already there open on the table. All that matters is that the cards connect to each other. And remember, you may only move one space. You can come back to a space you've visited before, that's not a problem. One nice thing about moving, as soon as you step onto a card that shows a number in one of the corners, you can move your own marker up that many spaces on the track of your own player board. You use this to play bonus cards from your hand. I'll get to that later. The next action. If you choose to slide your cube to the bottom right, then you have two options. Either you take one of these yellow memo sticks from the supply and place it here. Or you place it on the board. Keep in mind that you may never have more than one of these on your own player board. So if there's already one there, you can't take another one. You first have to place the one that you have on the board. But what do you do that for? Remember that you may only move to another card if they're both connected by the yellow notes. If you place a memo stick here, you are allowed to walk over to that card no matter what. The only problem is that everyone can do this now. It's not just for you. As long as the memo stick is there, every player can use that as a bridge to move to that card. The third action you can choose to do is place one of these cards. You start each turn with having at least two of these square cards with the email icon on it. The project cards. There's no limit to how many you can have. If you slide your cube to this action, you can place one of them. That's all. You don't move there, you only place it on the board. You must place it next to another card, but at least you can choose which way around you want to place it. You don't have to connect the yellow notes if you don't want to. 
And the final action. Slide your cube to the bottom left to do this action, taking new cards from this deck, the Office Politics. These are the bonus cards that you can play. If you do this action, you have two options. Either you place some of the cards that you have on the main discard pile, and then you take as many new cards from the deck, plus one. Or you take three cards from the top, then you look at all the cards that you have, and choose two cards to place face down back on top of the deck. To remind you how this action goes, it's written on your own player board by the action. That goes for every action. The reminder is right there. Just keep in mind that if you choose the option of taking three cards and returning two, that they go on top of the deck. Those were all the actions. Now for the bonus cards. Each turn you will start with at least three of these office politics cards. And playing them is not an action. You can play as many cards as you like. And just like with the other cards, there is no limit to how many you can have. The only thing you need is to play them is points on this track on your own player board. This is what you pay to use these cards. You can go up on this track when you move onto a card that shows a number in the corner. Whenever you play these cards, keep them in front of you. Only when, it's, when your turn is completely over, then do you place them on the discard pile. Let me show you how the cost of a card works. I'll take this card that's called Restructure Priorities. If I want to play this card, I first have to pay the cost. It's written right under the word cost. In this case it shows a 1, so I move my marker down one space on my track. And then if I want to, I can do the bonus action that is written right next to it. But it's possible I don't want to do that one, but one of the other ones. You can only choose one thing to do on each card. If I would want to do the action that's written at the bottom here, the price on the left says that I also have to discard two of these politics cards from my hand. That's the additional cost if I want to do the additional action. And there's also an action in the middle. If I want to do that one, I wouldn't need to discard those two cards, but I would need to go down further on my own track. And I choose by how much. As you can see, instead of a number, it shows a question mark. That means I get to choose. The main action at the top says, pick a project card that is one tile away. That means any card that surrounds the one that you are standing on, even the diagonal ones. Then it says, move it by one into an empty tile. If there's another player on it, that person stays on that card. So, that's just moving a card that's somewhere next to you to another empty space. But that's the action that you choose not to do, because you want to do the other action that's written below it. That one says, plus one tile further. That means I can pick a space that is more than one space next to me. I can choose which one. And for each space it's further away, I have to pay an additional cost on my track here. So if I chose a space that is three spaces away, I have to go down another two spaces on my track. And that is how Office Politics bonus cards work. One last thing and then we're done. When you reach a space with a boss, you can take one of the cards of the same color that's next to it to indicate you've been there. But 
if you can handle one small extra rule in the game, you can flip it over and do whatever it says. The card will speak for itself, it'll be an extra bonus you can use. You have to decide whether to do this or not before you start the game. Either everyone does it, or no one. And what do you do when it's the end of your turn? You finish each turn by maybe refilling your hand. You always refill your politics cards back up to three. But if it turns out you have zero cards left, you can even take four. This is written on your own player board to remind you. And you refill your hand with the project cards, the square ones, back up to two. You should always have at least two. And that's it. This is how you play Welcome to Sisyphus Corp. I hope you feel like you understand how it goes and that you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching, feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.